What's up Preppers, Community Prepper here. Today we are doing an unboxing, assembly, and review of the Furman 7500 watt generator. The one that Costco sells, the one you walk by every time you go into Costco and say, hmm, should I buy that? Well, this is gonna be the most comprehensive information you can find on YouTube. I've done my research, so sit back and take notes. This is gonna be a good video. Okay, so just to reiterate, this is the Furman T07571 generator, the one that Costco sells. I think I paid $6.99 for it on sale. There is an upgrade to this that they currently sell in Costco, and I believe it's a black or gray uh, outer shell. And from my research, the only difference that I can find is that the new one has a carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide sensor on it. They have to idiot proof it for people who think they can run these in their living room or in a garage. So that's the only difference. If you guys know of any other differences, please comment below. But let's open this sucker up and put it together. All right, preppers, let's open this sucker up. So if you watched my last video, we talked about everyday carry. I'm gonna pull out my everyday carry knife and let's cut open these. Let's see what is in this bag. All right. This here, the directions, obviously. This is the cover. This is the cover that comes with the generator to protect it. You wanna store this thing outside of uh, dusty and dirty environments uh, to keep it clean. We'll put that on the side for now. We've got our instructions here. All right, we got a box on the side here. Let's see what's in this. All right, we got a funnel to put the oil in. We'll put that right here. We have the wheels. It does come with oil. This is 10W30. I think I also bought 5W30 for it. It has a, a wider range of uh, the temperatures that the uh, generator will operate smoothly in from minus degrees to you know 120 degrees outside. This here is the uh, other side support. You have the wheels on one side and you have this on the other which allows the generator to sit off the ground. It looks like about four inches. This looks like the tools to assemble everything. This here is the extension cord that you can plug into maybe the 120 or the 220 outlet uh, to convert it to you know your normal uh, electricity for your appliances. This looks like a rack to hold the extension cord to the generator. This is the propane. Um, uh, a, t a hose and it does not come with a natural gas now this thing is runs on gasoline propane and natural gas the natural gas hose is sold separately but this is the propane one if you plan to run this on propane and then finally I don't know what those are something with cotter pins in it we'll figure it out probably to put the wheels on yeah all right and that's it in this box so that's the unboxing of the uh, parts. Now let's get to the uh, generator part. So um, I'm a big guy, I'm kind of strong, but there's no way I can lift this thing because this is almost 215 pounds. So it does come with wheels, which is great, but let's see the best way I'm gonna get this thing out of the box. Probably just have to cut it down the side. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the wheels on. Obviously you need these little cotter pin type dealios for the wheels. So the cotter pin just comes out. There's a washer, pull that over. Now, this is the important part, nipple part of the, the wheel. See how this part sticks out and this is an innie. You wanna put that part and go through. And you wanna put the washer on the back end. and the cotter pin back through. Repeat that on the other side. Okay, now that the wheels are on, and obviously I had to raise the generator up. I put it on some two by fours on a little dolly just to get it off the ground so it would clear to put on the uh, hardware accessories. Next thing we're gonna put on 
is the little stand. Looks like this, and it already has the bolts on top. So I'm gonna do them one at a time. And there's two pre-drilled -drill holes right underneath where the uh, muffler is, right by the handle, by your exhaust. I'll put them in one at a time. They just go through. Take your bolt, I'll hand tighten these. There's one. Again, just I'll hand tighten for now. Next, I'm gonna open up the other accessory kit. I'm assuming these are the tools that you need. There they are. So it comes with a little wrench, 12 and 12, not the 10 side, the 12 side. Support the bottom bracket and tighten. You don't want to over tighten, you don't need to over tighten. So now let's take this off the dolly and set it on the floor. So we see that how the wheels and the front support works and the handle. Okay, it's been a few days since I started the review on this generator. Obviously my uh, facial hair is a little shorter, but my camera died and then I just uh, put it off for a while. So let's pick up for what we did. We put the wheels on. We also put on this support here. I'm gonna turn this to the side so we can see it. Obviously this is the front of the generator. Um, let's go to the back. Because next we're gonna put on the uh, extension cord holder and it does go right here. And there are some stickies that you would take off. And let's center this right about there. Give it a good little hit. Take this, this just sits in that and it sits in very snug. The other thing we wanna do is this is the propane hookup and there's a little Velcro area for this here. And it looks like this just goes around here. Goes under the bar. And, and it secures like that. Pretty much it. Okay, now let's talk about the battery and oil. Right out of the box, the battery is hooked up. The wires are hooked up to the battery itself. The red wire is going to the spark plug. There's a boot that covers the spark plug. The only thing you need to connect is this black piece. There's really only one way to put it in and it just snaps in like that for the oil. Now I have already put the oil in off camera and I made a little bit of a mess because I poured it too quick and it overflowed a little. Actually, it wasn't that bad of a mess, but this is where you would put your oil. They ship the container, the generators um, with no oil. So it does, it will take a full quart. Also, I'm gonna put on the screen right now an oil guide to what oil you can use and what oil works best. I believe it's the 5W30 synthetic is the best oil and it's rated for multiple temperature ranges from minus degrees to very, very hot. So depending on your climate that you're operating your generator, maybe a no brainer is to just use 5W30 synthetic. And that goes in here. When it is time to drain the oil, there is a oil plug and, it, and it's just a bolt like in a car that you would just 
drain the oil into a bucket and dispose of properly and refill the oil. There's no filter in here. There's no oil filter per se, but you do need to change the oil and we'll go over the maintenance uh, at the end of this video. All right, preppers. So next we're going to talk about a fuel source. I'm going to uh, hook this up with propane initially. It does take propane, natural gas, and gasoline. The gasoline you would fill in the top, it takes eight gallons. We're going to take our propane hose off of here. And let's go get our propane tank. The blue goes into your propane tank. Get a nice hand tight. And then your propane insert to the generator is right here. We'll plug that in. And then we need to select our fuel for propane two different ways. This is your fuel selector. That's gasoline. That's propane and natural gas. There is a secondary, let's try to move this, a secondary place on the generator that you're going to need to select for propane and natural gas. And that's this way. Now what I found is when you start this, <clears throat> we'll turn our propane on and now it's ready to start by simply hitting this. On the side there is a choke. When I used the propane or hooked up the propane the first time, I had the choke in the start position and the generator would not start. I put the choke in the run position and it started right up. So I don't know if propane is just a richer gas, but I think the choke might be uh, more prevalent or needed when you're using gasoline. So. We are in an enclosed environment, but I'm going to pop this baby on for a second and then turn it off. This is your start button right under here. You need the generator breaker in the on position. And then you just press this and start it up. And obviously to turn it off, you just need to go from propane to the off position. So let's unhook this and let's go over a few more things about the generator and what your maintenance is going to look like. All right, preppers, I want to go over some of the maintenance and the frequently asked questions that I've done the research on and read through the manual pretty thoroughly so you don't have to. So we went over um, the unboxing we went over how to put on the wheels, how to put on the front support, where to hang the power cord, where to hang the propane cord, how to fill the oil, and like I said before, it will take 32 ounces of oil, dry, shipped from the company. Push start button is an electrical push start. You can pull the cord to start it if the battery's dead. If it's stored long for a long time without any um, startups, the battery can die. So if you need to pull start it like a lawnmower, it'll start up and then once the generator's running, it will charge the battery. Well, let's talk about maintenance. So the maintenance in the brochure, let's talk about oil first. So after 25 hours of your initial use, you're going to want to drain the oil and then refill it. And again, the synthetic 5W30 is probably the multiple, I'm sorry, the best uh, oil to use in multiple uh, uh, temperature ratings. So if you're, you have winters that are very brutally cold or summers that are very brutally hot, 5W30 is like the all round. So then you want to change your oil after every 100 hours of use. If you are not running the generator regularly, change the oil every year, even if you don't use it at all. The drain plug is directly below the oil 
cap is where you load the oil. You just unscrew that, put a pan under there, and then properly dispose of the oil. And another important thing is you want to check the oil level prior to each use. Now let's talk about the spark plug. I got spark plugs here. So I went to the store and I bought two replacement ones, $3 each. No brainer, go get the uh, spark plug. It's an RN9YC. So you want to change the spark plug every 100 hours of usage. Also, the spark plug gap, and I'm gonna have this on the screen too. You wanna gap it from 0 0.028 to 0 0.031 gap. So get a uh, dollar spark plug gap tool at your automotive store or Walmart. Make sure your spark plugs are properly gapped so your engine will run the best. Now let's talk about the air filter. Air filter, you wanna clean it after about every 50 hours. The air filter, um, it's in a casing where you'll unscrew and pull it out and you can blow it off with canned air. And if it's really dirty, you can wash it in detergent with your hands. That's what the manual does say. If you need a replacement air filter, you can order one straight from Furman and the part number will be in your Furman uh, uh, guide or directions or brochure or whatever you call those things. Now let's talk about the exhaust system. Pretty easy. You probably won't have to do a lot of maintenance on the exhaust filter. It does say to check the spark arrest screen and clean or replace the screen after every 100 hours with a wire brush. So that is your maintenance on this machine. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot of things that you need to do to keep it in perfect working order. All right, preppers, now we're gonna go into some of the uh, frequently asked questions that you might have. And um, these are around how loud is it? How much does it weigh? What's the efficiency of running it with gas versus propane? So we'll get right into it. So this 439cc engine weighs just shy of 225, 220 pounds, I'm sorry and it has an eight gallon gasoline tank. Next, we wanna talk about the running watts. The running watts actually differs from what fuel source you are using. For example, you get the full 7,500 watts when you're running gasoline, but the efficiency of the generator drops a little bit for propane and natural gas. 6,750 for propane and only 550 5,500 for natural gas. So you're looking at a 2,000 watt drop from going from gasoline to natural gas. So take that into consideration when you're using this to power your home or your appliances in a power outage or grid down situation. Here's a good one. So when you start this generator up, regardless of your fuel supply, you're gonna want to let this generator run for five to 10 minutes before you go plugging in your electrical devices. You want zero load on the generator when it's starting, so nothing's immediately drawing from it. Give it time to warm up and then start plugging in your devices. Furthermore, when you wanna shut the generator down, make sure you unplug all of your devices that are plugged in to the generator or your extension cord going into your home. Let's talk about the efficiency of, of gas and propane and natural gas again. So gasoline is the most efficient, and they're saying it's gonna run 12 hours on eight gallons of gas at a 50% load. So if you're drawing 50% of 7,700, you're gonna get this sucker running for 12 hours on eight gallons of gas. That's pretty good. For the propane, one of these, a 20 pound propane tank at your 50% load again, will get you six hours. So if you were to need to run this for 24 hours at 50%, you're gonna need four propane tanks. Is that right? I think my math is right. Um, furthermore, natural gas, they say 100 cubic feet per hour of running at 50%, but that's really not of a concern because with natural gas, you're gonna be hooked up to your home's natural gas line where hopefully your supply is a lot uh, greater than having just propane and gasoline on hand. All right, next we're gonna talk about how loud this thing is. 
So they rate it at 72 decibels at 20 feet away. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, it's the same as an alarm clock going off, a coffee grinder, or a hair dryer. When I started this up, I think it was probably about the same loudness as your typical lawnmower. So that could give you something to wrap your head around as far as how loud this thing really is. It's not that bad. Uh, you could talk to somebody right next to it. You do have to raise your voice, but it's not like screaming over something extremely loud. All right, let's talk about having uh, gasoline and propane. So if you're in a pinch and you only have maybe a 120 one gallon, 20 pound propane tank, and maybe you only have five gallons of gas in a little container, you can fill this sucker with gasoline or hook the propane up. And when one of them runs out, you just switch the dial to the other one here and here to um, use what you have on hand. So basically you're running on gasoline. It's going for three, four, five hours. All of a sudden it peters out. All you gotta do is flip this to your other fuel source, propane, Swip it over here to propane and then restart it and it should be fine. You don't need to do any uh, flushing or anything like that. So it, it's really easy to use what you have on hand. Furthermore, gasoline. You could leave gasoline in this for up to six months without it potentially going bad without a gasoline treatment. I would try to dump it or suck it, siphon it out after that six months, maybe dump it in your car or whatever you wanna use it for but don't store these for long periods of time and think the gasoline is gonna be good in a year or a year and a half sitting in your garage. When you're hooking up your more sensitive electronics to the generator or to your extension cord, you're gonna to wanna to use a surge trap. Uh, sensitive uh, electronics is definitely like a computer or a laptop computer. I wouldn't 100% trust the continuous power flow out of any generator. I have watched videos where they do check the power and it is semi-consistent saying what it's, um, what it's putting out. So uh, just as a secondary backup, use a surge protector when plugging in sensitive electronics. Just a couple more. Uh, the manual recommends that you run the generator for 30 minutes every month at zero load, whether you're using it I'm sorry, if you're not using it. Uh, also, store your generator in a clean and dry environment. It does come with a, a nice cover. Let's get that. I haven't put this on yet. But it, it will protect the generator from dust and things in the environment. I wouldn't store it outside. I'd store it in a shed or a garage but that's pretty nice. It covers uh, the bulk of the generator and just basically the wheels are exposed. So this is how you would want to store it. Okay, now let's quickly go over the different parts on the front panel of the generator. We'll start from left to right. So right here, this is where you would hook up your propane or natural gas line. Next, we move over. This is your fuel selector for gas or propane or natural gas. If you were running it on gasoline, you would put it in that position and you'd start it up with this button. As long as the battery is charged, you will have it start up. You do wanna use the choke on the side, over here, right there, that bad boy, and you wanna put it in the start position. Start position is to the left, the run position is to the right. When you start it up, you'll have it on the start, It'll sound choppy and pop, 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 pop. Once you put it over to the run, it'll become smooth. Next, we want to look at how to turn this on and off. We have it on in the gas Olean selector right now. That would be your propane. If you are running propane or natural gas, you will also need to do this selector right here to propane or natural gas. It's kind of a double fail safe. When you wanna turn this off, you wanna unplug all of your appliances or unplug your plugs from the different amperage, amperage, amperages, ampage, amps, uh, extension cords you might have in. So you can unplug these and then you wanna turn it off by turning it to off. All right, let's go into this here. 
This right here is your circuit breaker. It does need to be in the on position when you start it. If it's off or if it flips to off, it's just like the circuit breaker in your home. You gotta push it back up and restart your generator. This we already talked about, it's the electronic on and off. Um, you push it on for three seconds, your generator powers up. Right here, this is your display and how many hours of usage that you will, uh, that you have used your generator for. It'll say, you know, four hours, 10 hours, 300 hours, whatever you're on. Next, we're gonna talk about the four different caps on here. The biggest one here is your 50 amp. The second one is a 30 amp. The third one is also a 30 amp. And then the one on the end is a 20 amp, just like your typical household socket. These here are circuit breakers for these three. If any of these trips, you need to turn it to on before you restart your generator. This here is the circuit jet breaker for your regular wall kind of 20 amp thing um, socket. If it does trip, it'll pop out. You need to push it back in to restart your generator. All right, down here we have the boot going from here to your battery, that's where your spark plug would be, right behind there. So you need to pull the boot off, use a 13th, 16th, I believe 13th, 16th uh, socket type wrench to get your spark plug out. These here are the battery cords, they go to your battery. This is your battery right there self-explanatory, and then right here is your oil cap. And this is where you would want to check your oil before every time you use your generator. Now I did have trouble screwing this in properly earlier because the threading is so tight and it took me a few times to get it to go in, not on an angle. So I'm gonna play with that later off camera. Okay, here we are looking at the left side of the generator. We only really have three things to worry about here, or maybe four. This is your pull start. If your battery is dead in your generator, you are going to need to pull start it to get it running. Once the generator is running, it will recharge your battery. It's kind of like an alternator in a car. Up here, we have your fuel selector for natural gas and propane. So if you are not running gasoline, you need to select this for natural gas or in the left position for propane. You first need to adjust this to your natural gas or propane, actually natural gas and propane side like that. Then you would need to put this on your natural gas and um, or your propane, whatever you're using. So we're on propane, I don't have natural gas. So this is the position it needs to be in. If you were running natural gas, it would be like that. Right here is your choke. When you start the engine, they want you to have it in the start position. Now I've started it with propane in this position and it started up no problem, but just for the sake of doing what the manual shows, if you're sh starting it from any gas source, Try starting it in the start position. And after just a few seconds, it'll start, it'll start to, it'll sound very poppy and choppy when you start it up in the start position. But as soon as you flick it to here, it'll smooth out the engine noise. Okay, as you can see, I have put the propane hose back hanging off of the left side of your generator. Also worth mentioning that when you do plug in your propane and you're setting your tank, wherever it is, you do not want it to be on the other side in front of your exhaust port. Obviously, it's going to be pumping out some pretty hot fumes. You don't want your uh, house to explode or your backyard to explode where you'll be running this generator from. 
All right, now we're looking at the top of the generator. This is where you would be putting in your gasoline, just like there, and it does take eight gallons, it says right there. And then that right there is your gas gauge. Here are some directions on how to do certain things on the generator, how to start it. So it just gives you something that's glued onto the generator to always refer to. All right, so when you have this in your backyard and it's running and it's 20 feet away from the house, you're gonna need to get the power from here to your house, your kitchen, wherever it is. So that's where this sucker comes in. So let's try to do this one-handed. <laughs> so this is gonna plug in to there. And then you have this, and then you want to get a good heavy-duty extension cord. This is a heavy-duty one. I think it's, uh, yeah, it is rated for 30 amps, and that's when you would plug your extension cord into your converter and then run this into your house. It'd be good to put a surge trap on the end of here, and then you can plug in multiple appliances, computers, things like that, that you need to do when the power is out and you're relying on your generator. All right, preppers, that is my video on the Furman generator. It is hot as balls in this garage right now. And if you can't see, I am sweating through this shirt. It's 80 degrees today in San Diego. My garage door is right there with the late afternoon sun beating down on it. So let's wrap this up. Furman generator. I hope you guys got something out of this video, whether if you are thinking about buying this generator or if you already own it and really didn't know what you were up against, or maybe it's still sitting boxed in your garage and you bought that generator, but you haven't learned how to use it yet. I hope this video gave you some guidance. If it did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know your remarks, your comments below in the comment section, section. Did I miss anything? Did I help you? Did I answer any of the questions? I hope that this video will be the most thorough unboxing setup and not really a review yet because I haven't used it extensively, but from what I've watched on other YouTube channels, this thing is pretty reliable. So I haven't seen any negative feedback about it. Once again, guys, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and refuse to be a victim.